Hello and welcome to another video from the Greener Side Language Academy. Today we're going to be focusing once again on the CSEC Spanish Paper 1 and we'll be continuing with some exercises from the reading comprehension section of that paper. Now, this is just a recap of some of the things that were discussed in the last video. Feel free to pause the video to look at this the layout for paper one as well as some tips that you'd like to keep in mind when doing this particular paper so you can go ahead and pause the video and look at these tips as well as the layout if you missed the video before in fact if you'd like to watch that video feel free to click the link in the top right corner of the video to watch that video so now let's continue with part two So here we have an advertisement, right? Salon Venus. And of course, you are required to read the instructions. Here they are. You can pause the video to see. But essentially, it's saying that you should read the ad below and answer with the best option out of the four options provided for you. Okay? So here we have items 53 to 56. I'll stop it here so you can pause the video and read it. All right, so go ahead and do that right now. Now, having paused the video and read this ad maybe several times to ensure that you understand completely, let's look at the questions and try to answer them. ¿Quiénes pueden visitar este salón? ¿Quiénes pueden visitar este salón? Who can visit this salon? So, it says, Visite nuestro salón unisexo. Unisexo meaning unisex. We know that means persons from both sexes, male and female. Do we see any other information about the type of client? Right, at the end we see, Se atienden personas mayores de 18 años we attend to or um essentially services given only to persons older than 18 years of age right so of course it must be c looks like it could be an answer right cualquier persona de ambos sexos anybody from both sexes hmm let's consider reconsider Ese es solo damas de 18 años. Only women who are 18 years old, which is incorrect. B says solo caballeros de 18 años. Only men or gentlemen who are 18 years old. That's incorrect as well because we saw it was unisex. Cualquier persona de ambos sexos. Yes, but you know, it could be that this cualquier persona is referring to a child under the age of 18. So I would choose D, personas de por lo menos 18 años. So persons who are at least 18 years old. So you have to be very careful with the way that you approach these questions. So D would be the correct answer here. What about number 54? ¿De dónde son los especialistas? So do you remember reading where this is from the, the persons are from who perform this service beauty services it says el salon venus está supervisado por expertos europeos europeos means european so the the venus salon is supervised by european experts so de europa from europe of course any of these countries would apply because they're all in europe but it didn't say one particular country. It said from the continent of Europe. So B, as in boy, is the correct answer. It's about number 55. ¿Cómo es el salón? So did we see any information about the salon? About, you know, the, its description? So it said, el más moderno de la isla. Anything else? Did we see anything else? En un ambiente lujoso. So, lujoso. 
an, an environment that is luxurious. Lujoso and moderno are the two adjectives you see that describe the place. Be sure not to get it confused with adjectives describing the people at the place, the people who work there, right? So you have to be very careful when you're reading and analyzing. So of course, the answer would be, ¿Cómo es el salón? Asking, what is the salón like? Moderno y lujoso would be the most appropriate answer. All right, and of course, if it were a case where we weren't too sure, you could go the route of elimination. Now for number 56. ¿Por qué es muy esencial el número tele telefónico? ¿Por qué es muy esencial el número telefónico? Why is it, why is the number, the telephone number very important? What do you recall? So here are the options. Para hacer una cita, para verificar si está abierto, para llamar los fines de semana o para conseguir línea. So let's look at A. In order to make an appointment, una cita, let's see, it says cita previa, meaning you need to have an, a previous appointment. So the appointment would have been made, right? So maybe that is a possibility. What about B? To verify if it's open, you don't need to call to do so. It says abierto de lunes a sábado, right? Para llamar los fines de semana, well, if we're going to talk about weekends, we're talking about Saturday and Sunday, Sabado y Domingo, but we know that it's not open on Sunday. And of course, it doesn't make any sense to call just on the weekend. So you just have the number to call on the weekend. Is that logical? No. Para conseguir línea? So the answer here, obviously. Para conseguir línea? No, that wouldn't be the answer. So the answer here is obviously A. To make an appointment because it says cita previa you'd need a previous appointment before coming in all right so there we have it we have deciphered this particular item and we've answered the questions correctly now let's look at the last item for today now this is a different type of item or a different type of um i should say passage so here we have almost a story so it's just a short story a short section or a short extract from a story right so we're gonna read it and of course answer the questions that follow so i'm going to give you a bit of time to pause the video read this and once you're back we'll tackle the questions Okay, so having read through this passage more than once and having understood at least the majority of what it says, let's attempt questions 57 to 59. So 57 says, ¿Qué ocurrió el sábado pasado? What happened last Saturday? Here we see, el sábado pasado, Maribel, la hija de mi vecina, se cayó de la rama de un árbol, de un árbol alto, y quedó sin sentido en el suelo. All right, so from that, what can you understand? So, Maribel, who is the neighbor's daughter, she fell from the branch of a tree onto the floor, a tall tree. So, out of these options, which one do you think um, works out the best? Un árbol se cayó al suelo. Did the tree fall to the ground? No. So, by process of elimination, A is out. B, una niña se hizo daño. Possible. So let's keep that as a possibility. Una vecina, this is C, una vecina quedó sin sentido. Possibility. D, una niña salvó a su gato. Has nothing to do with what has happened. A girl didn't save her cat. So, of course... At the end of the day, did mention her talking about, you know, trying to help her cat, but did she really save her cat? That's not really what is the focus of the event that happened on Saturday. So, it would be either B or C. So, which one would you choose? So, B here would mean a girl got hurt, and C would mean a neighbor was left 
unconscious because sentido means consciousness or sin sentido without consciousness unconscious now what is the event that is more um meaningful here the fact that she got hurt right not that she was left unconscious she could have been left unconscious from anything but the main thing that happened is that she got hurt so b would be the correct answer and it's not always easy to to choose the correct answer for these so you have to really it comes down to logic a lot of the times so you have to fully understand what is being said and try your best to approach it all right, so 58, al caerse del árbol, la niña, so you're supposed to finish it now with the appropriate ending. So upon falling from the tree, the girl no se movió, corrió a casa, no podía subir, llamó al hospital. So of course, we know the girl was unconscious. So maybe A would be the correct answer. She did not move, no se movió. So B is obviously out. She could not have run to the house if she was ill or if she was unconscious. No podía subir. Obviously, because she had fallen, she wouldn't be able to climb. So that's not necessarily um, not necessarily the appropriate answer. Llamó al hospital. She was unconscious, so she couldn't have done that. So obviously, the answer would be A. She didn't move. Now for 59. ¿Qué hacía su mamá cuando ocurrió el accidente? What did her mother, or what was her mother doing? So we have to be careful here. Not what did her mother do. What was her mother doing? That's imperfect tense. What was her mother doing when the accident occurred? ¿Se cayó al suelo? Did her mother fall to the ground? No, it was the girl. So that's not correct. ¿Corría al jardín? Was she running to the garden when this happened? No, the mother was not running to the garden. Se quedó en casa? Did she stay at home when the accident occurred? No, well, this wouldn't even work because you need to know what she was doing while it happened or when it happened. So these are the correct answer. Trabajaba en el jardín. She was working in the garden. And it says it here. Estaba trabajando en el jardín. All right. And lastly, ¿Cómo se sintió la madre al ver caer a su hija? How did the mother feel upon seeing her daughter fall? Temerosa. So, of course, this comes from the verb temer, which means to fear. So, fearful. Enojada, upset, like angry. Alegre, happy. Avergonzada, um, shameful or ashamed. What do you think would have been the correct feeling? Well, let's look back. Muy asustada. She was shocked. Or she was worried. That's what asustada means. So the, the most appropriate word that would be like an, a synonym to asustada would be temerosa. So of course, the answer for 60 is A. So there you have it. We have gone through four different types of exercises or um, possible questions that would come on the multiple choice paper that's the paper one and i really hope this did help so as i always say mantén la calma y aprueba el examen just keep calm and pass that exam you'll do fine